Hello! And welcome back to Terrible Takes. Uh, if you're wondering why we have been kind of MIA, you know, life gets pretty crazy sometimes. You know, we all got things we have to do, priorities, you know, everything. So, but we're back. Um, and also, another announcement, we will be doing bi-weekly recordings uh, because of, you know, life and such. Uh, so, if you're hearing this tomorrow or Friday or Saturday, whenever this comes out, uh, then you won't have anything the next week. Next week we'll be back. Uh, and that we'll, we'll be doing that moving forward. Um, Holden's not with us. He's doing a tech basketball game. Lucas is currently uh, doing his stuff over on the YouTube channel, 318 Legends. Make sure to go over there and check it out. Uh, we've dropped episodes with Jake Martin, um, who was the we uh, with um, 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 Jacob Pearson. Jacob Pearson uh, and uh, and Donnie Altman. So you know we've got those three. We've got wide receiver John Diaris. Yes, John Diaris, wide receiver, former wide receiver for the Denver Broncos uh, and TC Horn Frog. Uh, but a lot of cool things happening over there uh so that's where lucas is too if you're new here or you don't remember uh but welcome back welcome back so it's me and john i'm here uh first subject you know football football season's over with uh so we don't really need to talk about that too much but you know the college football video game is still scheduled to release this summer so huge dubs arch manning is corny for saying he doesn't, he wants to focus in real life, but you know, college football coming back, so that's huge news. Trailers, I'm sure, will drop in the next couple months. Do you have anything to say on the video game? Uh, all I hope, I don't know if you ever saw the trailer when the new Madden came out, but they had Patrick Mahomes like in the trailer going and throwing one side armed, and it doesn't look anything like that in the real game. So I just hope whatever trailer they do come out with looks legit like what it's going to be like in the game. Not I know it's like from a different perspective when they come out with a trailer, but you want it to look and you want to see some of the graphics that you're going to actually be able to play with in the game rather than some made up graphic just to get people to buy the game and then they hate the game. I hope I mean, obviously, we've already discussed this before outside of this podcast that. You know, we hope they don't do a lot of the stuff that Madden does, but I don't think they'll have to because, for one, Madden's under contract to make a game every single year, whereas I don't think NCAA is. I don't think they're under contract to have to do that. And so all they'd have to do is update the game if they really wanted to and just make it better, and hopefully they learn from Madden and all the hate that Madden gets, and they can make a really fun game that we haven't had in forever. <laughs> yep. Oh. There's our football segment, unless we have anything other than news. But moving on, college basketball. It is March, so March Madness. Cue the March Madness theme song. One shining moment, all that good stuff. It's March. March is here. March Madness. So, because it's March Madness, we have conference tournament play going on. And we already have a little bit of madness uh, in the American Sun tournament. The number one seed and the number three seed in that tournament went down. So we potentially have a team that, you know, could be like four, I mean, not like have a like an under 500 record, you know, just barely 500 records to take the tournament from the American Sun, where they will probably be a 16 seed. But, you know, that's how it works. Uh, but conference championship right around the corner for all the other conferences and the Sun Belt's currently going on. Uh, there's others going on too. Uh, I know all the major ones will be going on next week, but Saturday, last regular se- last of the regular season is here. Saturday, big matchups. We got Tennessee and Kentucky uh, at four o'clock Eastern on CBS. We've got KU versus Houston, four o'clock Eastern on ESPN, and we've got a big one in North Carolina, North Carolina versus Duke on ESPN as well. I believe that is at 7 or 5.30 p.m. Central, one of those times. But it's on ESPN. It's going to be a great weekend. I'm sure John Allen's hype. Hopefully they could beat the Dukies. 
the Dookie Blue Devils. Uh, nasty school, nasty school. But conference championship is right around the corner. So we're going to list off our projected conference championship winners. We'll start with the ACC. John Adam, who do you have winning the conference tournament? I mean, I think we all know what I'm going to choose. Uh, we, we've we beat Duke already once this year. I think we looked better than them throughout that whole game. Sure, the game's going to be close. It's going to be back and forth because it is such a big rivalry. And ultimately, in those types of games, it's turnovers are inevitable. It's going to happen. It's so fast-paced. you got to learn how to slow it down, and it's going to come down to field goal percentage, I think. Well, I know for a fact anytime we've had a low field goal percentage in our shooting-wise, we've lost to anybody. Uh, and I think that's been a lot of teams this year. That's why we've had so many upsets. They're they're just not shooting well from the field, and they're losing to teams that they should be beating. But against Duke, we looked well. We looked really good defensively, and I think that's one thing I can stand firm on with this team is that we do have a good defense. Uh, we may lose because of our offense, but – we won't lose because of our defense. And so uh, I'm going to go with North Carolina. I think they beat Duke uh, this weekend, and we take the ACC. Yeah, I've got North Carolina as well. Uh, I just think they're better. I think they're the best team in the ACC. Uh, and I think they'll be the highest ACC seeded team in the tournament. Uh, foreshadowing moment for when we drop our seeds. Uh, but moving on to the Big 12, we've got the Big 12. Conference tournament happening next weekend. John, who you got for that? Uh, I've got Houston. Uh, I just think – I think they just – they look good this year, both offensively and defensively, and I think they'll they'll end up taking the Big 12. Yeah, I've got Houston as well. I think they'll, I think they'll have a sweep in the Big 12. Um, they've already clinched the regular season title. I guarantee you they'll win the conference title. You know, they're playing for the overall number one seed, and I think they deserve it at the moment. I think we're shot at the moment. Uh, but I got Houston winning. I don't think KU is in prime position currently to shock anyone. Uh, I don't think we beat Houston if we play them. Uh, we just – we're too inconsistent at the moment. Uh, if we find our consistency, you know, we've shown time and time after, you know, time and time again that we can play with the best team. I mean, we beat Tennessee, UConn. Uh, we've beaten Houston, uh, but I've got Houston winning the Big 12. Uh, moving on to another tight conference uh, tournament, the SEC. Who you got winning? <clears throat> so I actually think that this weekend is going to bring some interesting uh, stuff to the table with Tennessee playing Kentucky. Uh, I think that Kentucky actually beats Tennessee, and – I don't know exactly. I know South Carolina's up there as far as their record goes, but Auburn is ranked 13, and I think Auburn actually will take the SEC as much as I hate to say it. Uh, I just – there's – who they I, who are they playing? I can't remember who they're playing. I looked earlier. They play um, I think they'll beat them, and I think that Tennessee will lose to Kentucky, and Auburn will jump them and be in that spot, I think they'll win the SEC. As much as I hate to say that, I think they will. Yeah. Uh, I've got Tennessee winning the SEC. Uh, for me, this was a mix-up for our, uh, between Auburn, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Uh, I think Tennessee's proven themselves so far in the SEC that they can handle anybody. Um, so give me the volunteers. Old Rocky Top. Uh Moving on again with another power six school in the college basketball, uh, Big Ten. Who you got one in the Big Ten? Purdue. And I know they have a bad rap whenever it comes to March Madness and in the tournament. And I'm not saying that they're going to necessarily go super far, but I do think they will win the Big Ten. <clears throat> That's really all I've got on that. Yeah, I'm going to go with Illinois. I think Illinois is going to win the Big Ten Conference Tournament. Uh, though Big Ten always plays their final on a Sunday, so next Sunday that final will occur, and I think it'll be Illinois versus Purdue. 
Uh, but I think Illinois is going to come out on top and win the Big Ten and kind of shock anybody, uh, everybody. So moving on, we have the Pac-12. Who you got winning the Pac-12? I've got Arizona. I think they will win it. Yeah, I've got Arizona too. The Pac-12 is just not good at basketball. No, uh, no. Here, I mean, you got Washington State. I think is second in the conference. So Colorado. Yeah, yeah that should tell you how uh, Pac-12 is doing in basketball. Uh, so I've got Arizona as well. And then the last Power Six school for basketball, the Big East. Who's winning the Big East? I've got UConn. They've just they've looked good all year, and I know that you know there's some tough matchups in the Big East. Kind of like the Big Twelve. Whenever you've got you've got depth and teams, uh, I think ultimately UConn is the better one. Uh, I think I don't know. I, I just think they're one of the they're definitely one of the top teams in the country, and they've kind of solidified themselves as as number one in their conference. So I'm gonna go with UConn. Yeah, I'm gonna go with UConn as well. Uh, I think they're poised to uh, make a back to back run. Something. We haven't seen since the Florida Gators in uh, 06, 07. Um, they're just – they look dominant. They beat Marquette yesterday at Marquette. That's a great win on the road. I think if any team does give them trouble, I think it's Creighton because they do have their number. They have beaten them this season and pretty convincingly. Yes, it was away at Creighton, but still a pretty great win for Creighton in their resume. Uh, but I think UConn would win uh, their conference tournament as well. Moving on, uh, almost every Saturday now, the committee releases their top 16 teams in which they basically name their four one seeds, two seeds, three seeds, four seeds, up to this current moment. Uh, the Selection Sunday show will actually be next Sunday after the conclusion of the Big Ten championship game. Uh, that's usually around noon, I want to say. If it's not noon, one or two o'clock. Uh, early afternoon, and that'll go on for like two or three hours. Um, and then you will have the big bracket drop. Uh, but what we're going to do is a similar process. So we're going to name our four one seeds, our four two seeds, our four three seeds, and our four four seeds. So, Diane, you can name your four one seeds, and then I'll name my one seeds, and then we'll do two, three, and four until we run out. So, yeah. your <clears throat> four one seeds. I've got Purdue, Arizona, UConn, and Houston. I've got Houston, Purdue, UConn. So I agree with those three teams. However, I've got Tennessee as the last one seed. I got Tennessee as the last one seed. I think they have a great resume compared to Arizona. And I think if they make a great run, even if they lose, if they even if they somehow lose the SEC conference tournament, I think their resume is good as where it's at. I mean, look at the conference that the SEC is in compared to the Pac-12. SEC's got way better opponents than the Pac-12. Uh, so I've got Tennessee sneaking into the last one seed spot. Wait, uh, so hang on, hang on. Let me ask this question though. So if you you think that say Auburn or somebody goes and wins the SC, you don't think that they get in over Tennessee? You would no. still have Tennessee? Yep. Really? Tennessee has a great resume. Tennessee they has do. a great resume. They do, but I'm just asking. Pretty good team. Hey. <laughs> I feel like it would be a pretty big jump for Kentucky, Auburn, or Alabama, say they win, to jump to the one seed uh, because in my eyes they would have to jump like eight teams to get there, and I don't think any of them do. If any of those yeah. three teams do win, I think the m most they move up is to the bottom two seed uh, with a dominant performance again. The SEC, pretty good this year in basketball. Pretty good. I mean, they yeah. usually field five or six teams, uh, but no, I got I got Tennessee. Okay. So, our two seeds. So I have, what do you have? I've got Marquette. North Carolina, and I actually put Auburn because I think they're going to win the SEC, and I think they are going to jump Tennessee, um, and Kansas, actually. Wow. I've got North Carolina and Marquette as well. I do agree. I think those two teams are 
number two seed locks. I, I really do. I've got Arizona as my fifth rank, so the highest two seed. Uh, I think Arizona is just below Tennessee. Or it's going to be just below Tennessee. And I've got Kansas sneaking in because I think they'll make it to the Big 12 final. But I think they lose to either Houston or they'll lose to Iowa State, one of those two teams. Iowa State's having a great season. Um, well, actually, I think Kansas beats Iowa State. I think we would play Iowa State maybe. But regardless, I have Kansas as the final two seed on the line. Now, our three seeds, who you got? Uh, I've got Duke, uh, Illinois, Kentucky, and Iowa State. Great, great picks. I've got Duke. I've got Illinois. I've got Iowa State. And I've got Creighton. I think Creighton and their resume, and if they perform well against, say, they beat Marquette and they lose to UConn, or they beat UConn and lose to Marquette, I think that's enough to solidify them as a three seed lock. Uh, I like Iowa State. The best season they've had since they had uh, uh, George Niang and their Monte Morris, I think. Uh, best season in like 12 years, probably 10 years, I think. Uh, Duke is, I think, is a three seed lock. Creighton, three seed lock if they perform well. And I think uh, Illinois, I mean, I've got them winning the Big Ten. I got them on high on the three seed line. So. And then our last group of four. Four seeds. I've got Alabama, uh, Baylor, um, did I say Tennessee is my third on the last one? Or did I, yeah, okay, Tennessee, I have Tennessee in a four seed, uh, and I don't really have another one, if I'm being completely honest, um, so I'll just say, Florida, because I know that they are kind of on a hot streak right now. I know they just beat Alabama, and I know that Alabama is streaky when it comes to their offense. They either are the best team in the country or one of the worst when it comes to shooting. And so I'll say that they sneak in. Wow. Pretty bold. Uh, I've got Baylor. I've got Alabama. I've got Auburn. And I've got Kentucky. I think you're going to see three SEC teams on the four line. I think you'll probably have those four SEC teams we've named or I've named in the top 16. Uh, but, yes. So those are our projected top 16 seeds heading into March Madness. I mean, yeah, into basically March Madness. Selection Sunday, bracket drop in nine days. Uh, but that's all we have for college basketball, unless you have anything else that can Not include really. college basketball. So now we're on to another basketball, but make it professional. We've got the NBA. We're kind of heading to the last bit of the season, the last month of full games. And then I think we got like two weeks in April for regular season. And it's everyone's favorite time it's when everyone starts watching the NBA playoffs. Uh, but this time around, we see a lot of people talk about MVP. And the top five candidates so far heading into this week is Nikola Jokic, the best GA, which is Shai Julius Alexander, or Shea, however you want to pronounce it, Giannis, Jason Tatum, and Luka Doncic. Those are your top five currently heading in. So who's winning the MVP? They don't even have to be in the top five. Well, who you got winning MVP? <laughs> All right. So this is going to make you really happy if I'm being completely honest, okay? Comparing oh, yeah. the players that we've got here in the top five. Oh, yeah. And... Bring it... <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk to me. I'm we've hearing got, you out. We've got a lot of similar players in the top, you know, that we've had before. Uh, Jokic, obviously, you know, he's this is like his third year in a row of being in the conversation. 
he pro or he should have won it last year, in my opinion, too. He should have got it over Embiid. Um, personally, I I think he had a better season. Um, you have to look at team. I mean, we do this all the time with like Heisman winners or MVPs or whatever. You got to look at the success of the team, and you also have to look at the success of the player, obviously. And when you think of teams who are on the up and up, and you know their team just looks better in general. And you you point out that player specifically that has been consistent and that just shines on that team that's having the success that they're having. Obviously, some of these players um, that are in the top five have that, but the K- Oklahoma City Thunder have made strides in their season. And obviously, it's not just SGA. He's got some help, but it's really impressive what he's done this season with Oklahoma City. I think, personally, if if I'm going off who I would want to win, I think I want him or Luca to win it. Uh, just because I'm a I'm a Luca guy, and he doesn't he I don't think he's won MVP yet in his career, and he's consistently a top scorer in the league. Uh, he actually leads right now in points per game in the league, and so I just think that that one of those two I would like to see win it. Now. That may not happen. Obviously, Jokic is having a great season again. Uh, but so is SGA. As far as stats-wise go, I think those two are probably going to be your top two. But I would want Luka to be involved with SGA in that conversation, come down to the the end of it. Yeah, I think I would agree. I like Luka. Too bad his team can't play defense. And it's too bad that the last two games – He's let his opponent score, and he's guarding over 30 points. But I like Luka. I think my man's a dog. Uh, but we all know who I think is going to win MVP. Give me SGA. Give me Shy. Love that man. 46 30-point games, 30-plus 30 point games, tied with Kevin Durant in Thunder history for most in a single season. Bro is the 30-point king, master, whatever you want to say. He always scores 30 points. So if you're a betting person and you're wondering, hmm, is Shai going to score 30 points today? It's most likely going to be yes. He's done it in 46 out of 61 games. So let that sit in. Uh, He's second, obviously, in points per game. His efficiency numbers are crazy. He's, like, one of the best when it comes to factoring, like, everything into one – statistical number uh so give me shy i love that man he's doing wonders with the thunder it helps that he has help i think chet deserves rookie of the year i think it helps to have a re- young guys around him like chet like Jalen williams uh and, and yeah i've got i've got shy with him i think if i was a voter i'd vote for shy. I'd vote for shy. if not i think the okay should probably get it i'll be real but and then put you on the spot the standings in the West are a little wild, right? We've got four teams competing for the one seed. We've got the Timberwolves, the Thunder, the Nuggets, and uh, the Clippers all competing for the one seed. I think they all sit like a one or one and a half games back from each other. Uh, Timberwolves and Thunder are currently tied at the number one spot. Uh, but the play-in in the West is pretty crazy. The Suns, the Kings, uh the Mavericks, the Lakers, and the Warriors are all in that zone, six through ten. And they're all one to two, three games back from either surviving to the next round or staying in the play in. So, going out of my question to you Do you think the Warriors can escape the play in? Do you think they win the play in? How do you see your team? How, how, how are you feeling? Dude, it's, it's like. Every night is a question mark going into the game. And then once the game starts, you can tell kind of how things are going to go. And what happened against Boston this last week or whatever it was, was just I mean, it's miserable to to see, you know. And when Curry's shooting that bad, like when everybody is not being efficient, let's just say that. I mean, Curry's going to have his off night, but he needs somebody to – essentially be there to help when he's off and used to used to you would see 
in the finals or whatever, you would have maybe Curry slack off a little bit and put up 15 and Clay would put up 30 or 35 or something like that in a in a big way and have Draymond Draymond there to, you know, be assist and and be that kind of guy that he is the versatile defender slash pass, rebound, whatever, not necessarily a scorer, but they had more of a team then. And what it feels like right now is you still have Curry playing playing really good basketball and you've got Clay showing up every now and then. I mean, his roles now has completely changed than what it used to be. I mean, he's basically coming off the bench and that's not what you're used to seeing from him. But for a guy who's gone through like two surgeries and stuff like that, it's tough to to bounce back and be healthy and be the same guy that you once were. And I'm not saying that he's not still capable of playing in the league by any means, but he's lost some of that swagger and confidence in his shooting and, and his playing ability. And I think that's really affected Golden State in, in a, as a whole. They're getting older. You know, I've heard multiple comments from all of them that, like, they want to retire together at Golden State. And, you know, that's all great and stuff, but it's kind of like, you start looking at teams just in general in any sport, whenever they they're on their, their highest point, there's always some type of fall off, whether it be players getting older or injuries getting involved or players getting traded, whatever it is that that tip top of the mountain that you used to be at kind of starts slowly going down. And I think that ultimately right now, they're not in any state or form to be able to win much like they're going to constantly be where they are right now if they continue with the group they've got. And would I love to see them play together until they retire? Of course. Uh, but successful, being successful, I don't think that's going to happen with the roster they've got right now, whether trades be made or what it looks like. Draft picks coming up clutch. I don't know what it is, but for Golden State, they, you know, like I said, they can win some games. And they they are about where I I mean coming into the year I thought they would do a little better but they're about where I think most people would have said I mean you're getting Chris Paul who who's you know an older guy in the league too it's like it, they're they're in it for kind of like the fun and they're getting ready kind of to retire you can kind of tell that they may be getting to that point where they just kind of know they're not the best they can be anymore but they're still trying to play. That kind of seems what they're doing. Uh, and so, no, I don't think they will – I mean, they just don't match as far as age-wise and the ability to hang with these teams, these younger teams. I don't think they're going to be able to match the longevity of it in a series of games or whatever it is. And so they might win a surprising game, but I don't think it's going to be much to give them anything for the season. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a crazy time. You gotta love sports around this time. March Madness, NBA playoffs, MLB comes back, golf is back. You got the Masters in uh, less than a month or a month away. So that's always exciting. I know you're excited. Yeah. Uh, but going to more sports, we're going to someone, a topic that we haven't touched on the UFC. Uh, we've got UFC 299. This Saturday, uh, the big fight, Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera, part two. Uh, and then we also got Dustin Poirier versus Benoit St. Denis. We've got Kevin Holland versus Michael Page. We've got Gilbert Burns versus Jack Della Maddalena. And then we've got Peter Yan versus Song Yadong. So, UFC 299, uh, the past UFC 298, Volkanovski got upset to, to Poirier. And Tapuria is now the featherweight champ of the world for UFC. So exciting times. Uh, if you're a betting person, don't ever vote for Volkanovski. I've made that mistake. You know, I went three for three, three for I could have been three for three for one dollar. She could have made a dollar and fifty, put down like ten cents. Uh, I didn't win, so that's pain. Uh, but you know, that's okay. We live, we move, and we learn. Yes around the world of of fighting uh i have some breaking news i mean obviously you know yeah. it's not exactly breaking i guess people could have seen already but uh mike tyson and jake paul are squared off on july 20th 
in Arlington, Texas at at and Stadium. And it's really interesting to, to see that this is going to actually happen. I mean, I know it's going to get a ton of money. Uh, they're going to fill out that place just to try to see – I mean, I'll be if I watched it, it would just be to hope that Mike Tyson just demolishes Jake Paul. But at the same time, you look at this from an outside perspective and you go, why is Jake Paul wanting to fight an older 53 or something like that year old guy and you're in your 20s or whatever Jake Paul is? And it's like he's been doing that since day one. And, you know, I, I could catch a lot of hate from people by saying that, but it's, it's kind of facts. Like he fights a lot of retired people who are coming back for some money. I mean, ultimately that's what it is. They yep. want their, their, their money for fighting yep. you and they don't care if they lose cause they don't have anything to lose anymore. Yep. Uh, if it was an actual fighter, they obviously would not want to lose to you cause they don't, they're still in their prime or whatever it is, but he doesn't go for guys like that. He's, he's just going for, you know, more, He's, he's doing it in a very smart way. I will give him credit because he knows that because he keeps point like calling people out and wanting to fight people that more people are like, is this dude actually legit? We need to tune in. But if you look at it in a different light, it's like, well, who's he fighting? I don't know. It's They keep trying to get people. Now that they have Mike Tyson, it's this big old shebang. And so it's like, will he beat Mike Tyson? Well, Mike Tyson's still 53, 54 years old. How's that comparable? Like, he should beat Mike Tyson based off his age, but it's Mike Tyson. So I know he's still fit as all get out. I've seen videos, but. Look, it's like the equivalent of, let's say, like, Blake Bortles saying he's challenging Troy Aikman to an arm throwing competition. Like, let's be real here. Retired and old. He's 57. Yeah, he may still be fit, but like, you're 57. Your reaction time is delayed. You're old. It'd be like me going out like I'm going to do tomorrow and I play soccer on Friday and there's old people. I'm not going to brag that I nutmegged 57-year-old Fred, you know? Like, I'm not going <laughs> to brag that, oh, I just completely outpaced this 57-year-old who has four kids and he has and he's technically a grandfather now of, like, four months. I mean, let's. I'm not going to be, oh, I'm the best soccer player. Look at me. I'm the best in the state. I'm the best in Lawrence because I just dribbled a brown Fred who has been retired from the game for who knows how long. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, no, I hope Mike Tyson lays his tail out. Probably won't happen. And I'm prob- I'm sure it'll be like a draw or tie, something dumb like that. Uh, yeah. 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 Money, 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 money. Uh, moving on to softball really quickly. Uh, Oklahoma, the best softball team in the nation, you know, Three-peat, going for four-peat this year. Lost to ULL on Sunday and snapped their 71-game win streak. 71! Lost 5-7 to ULL at home. Crazy. Crazy times. And now Texas is number one, and it sucks. because No one likes Texas. And if you do, shame on you. You need to rethink all of your life decisions. Moving on to soccer, we've got a big weekend, a big, big weekend. As it stands currently in the Premier League, Liverpool is first with 63 points. Man City is second with 62 points. And Arsenal is third with 61 points. In the big game this Sunday at 10.30, I think it's 10.30. It's not as 10 or 9, I don't know. But it's in the morning on Sunday. Manchester City versus Liverpool. If Manchester City wins, they're first, and if Arsenal wins, they go to second, and Liverpool goes to third. If Liverpool wins and Arsenal wins, Arsenal goes to second, Liverpool stays at first, and Man City goes to third. If it's a tie and Arsenal wins, Arsenal has the chance to go to number one, and the others slide down. It's a big weekend for the title race. Is Man City going to win? You big Man City guy. You know what I'm going to say. I mean, I'm not going to say they won't, but it definitely is like a fun situation, fun, nerve wracking situation. But that's fun for me because my team is terrible. So I get to watch it. You get to sit back and relax and get your popcorn out. I do. Yeah. 
<laughs> but on the other hand, you've got, you know, me over here. I'm going to be sweating bullets. Uh, man, I, I, it's going to be a great game. I think, uh, it could very well end in a tie. I mean, I think there's a good chance that Arsenal might end up being able to squeak to number one just because of a tie. Now, do I want that? Obviously, no. Uh, but there's a good chance this might go like 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three, something like that. In games like this, they seem to be a little bit high scoring. I mean, the one, the game that Man City played Chelsea not super long ago. Crazy. Like, crazy. just those types of situations and I could see it you know if one were to win maybe two three or something like that but I think it'll get at least over three and a half goals so if you're a betting man I think it will go over that maybe even over four I don't know we'll see but I'm gonna take you on the three and a half I'm worried I'm, I'm going over three and a half <laughs> no, I definitely agree with you though I I, th- I think it's going to be very entertaining, regardless of the score. I think I think it'll be entertaining. If it's zero zero, we'll be a little disappointed, but I expect to see some goals. I expect Holland to at least score two. De Bruyne, maybe like one or two assists. Yeah. Foden had a beautiful goal against Manchester United this past weekend. It absolutely mm-hmm. obliterated Manchester United. Although Rashford, shout out to Rashford, he had a beautiful goal himself. Uh, yeah, we won. So we won. Well, hey, and I'm oh, grateful because yeah. I don't like Manchester United. So when you're playing you Man United, it doesn't matter how you win. It's just that you oh, win. Exactly. They're like Texas. They're literally Texas. Except Texas has no history, so they're not really <laughs> Texas. But no one likes them. So, you know, similar. Uh, but uh, that's the highlighted game this week. Um, some other news. Uh, In La Liga, Real Madrid sits first at 66 points, followed by Girona at second, and then Barcelona third. PSG is first in Ligue 1, the French League, with 55 points, with Brest Brest in second, and Monaco in third. And the German League, Bayern Leverkusen is still shocking everybody in the world. They're sitting at 64 points, 10 points clear of Bayern Munich, who's second in 54, and then Stuttgart, third at 50. And then in the Serie A, Inter Milan with 72 points, absolutely killing it. And with Juve, Juventus sitting second with 57, and AC Milan sitting third at 56. Uh, some other news, the U.S. women's team lost to Mexico for the first, for the second time ever. First time, I think, in on home soil. And But that's okay, because they are on to the Gold Cup final uh, this weekend against Brazil. Uh, that'll be, I think, Sunday or Saturday at like 8 or 9 o'clock. Uh, Champions League happened this week as well, and we got more Champions League action next week. Uh, PSG beat Real Sociedad 4-1 on aggregate to move on to the quarterfinals. Bayern Munich beat Lazio 3-1 on aggregate to move to the quarterfinals. Real Madrid beat Leipzig 2-1 to to move on to the quarterfinals. And Manchester City beat Copenhagen 6-2 on aggregate to move on to the quarterfinals. Next Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got Barcelona versus Napoli. They're currently tied 1-1 on aggregate. We've got Arsenal versus Porto. Porto's actually up 1-0 uh, on aggregate currently. Second leg is, I believe, on Tuesday. So that'll be a great game to watch. Uh, Atletico Madrid versus Inter Milan is on Wednesday. Inter Milan is currently leading on aggregate 1-0. And P- uh, Borussia Dortmund versus PSV Eindhoven is on Wednesday. And that game is currently 1-1 on aggregate. Uh, if you think I'm saying fancy words uh, for anyone who's new to soccer terms, or if you just want to skip, I recommend you don't because this is a great learning moment. In the Champions League, you play two legs, the first leg and the second leg. Uh, and it's basically a home and away series. And aggregate is basically the total goals you score. And if it's tied at the end of extra time, of the uh, full time of the second leg, you go to extra time and then possible penalty kicks. Uh, say your team wins 2-1 to one but loses 1-0. That's a tie 2-2. Two, two. Say your team wins 3-1 the first leg and then loses the second leg 1-0. Well, you won and you're moving on to the next round because your aggregate total is 3-2-2. Two, two. So just a little tidbit, crash course on if you're confused of me saying aggregate and legs. Uh, but 
that is the soccer news that I have uh, for this week. Now, moving on to golf. John Adam, golf news. I really don't have much. Uh, I will say that the Arnold Palmer invitation is this weekend, and after round one, Shane Lowry is in the lead by one stroke. Uh, that's kind of all I've got for the most part. Uh, one little tidbit, uh, Charlie Woods, Tiger Woods' son, played in a little qualifier uh, thing not too long ago, like maybe two weeks ago or something like that, and he did not play well at all. But, I mean, who's going to, you know, trash on the kid for not playing well in his first, like, qualifier for a PGA event? Uh, I know there was a lot of spotlight on him going out there, and apparently there was – you know, a lot of fans and stuff kind of being not so nice while he was trying to play his round, uh, which is kind of sad to see because that's not what golf is supposed to look like, uh, especially for like a 15 year old kid just trying to go out there and compete in like a big tournament like that. You don't want that, especially, you know, his dad's Tiger Woods. Like, I know he's going to have a lot of spotlight and he's got a lot to live up to. And, you know, it could create a really great golfer one day, you know, close your ears basically and don't listen to anybody and just grind at your work and become better. But ultimately you don't want to be that type of guy who's going to talk trash to a 15 year old kid on a golf course because he's better than you. Uh, but anyway, I mean, you're sitting at home or walking the course watching, or when you do go play golf, you're probably shooting 115 and chugging beers. Cause that's all you're good at. Uh, so leave the little kid alone and let him have his fun. Uh, no, that's all I have on golf. Uh, I will. What you got? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, and this is a little biased, but I'm just going to throw it in there. Uh, in the NFL, Russell Wilson is going to be parting ways with the Broncos. Uh, and according to some recent information, it looks like the Steelers may be really interested in getting Russell Wilson. And so if that were to happen, which I could see because, you know, the Steelers are the Steelers. Uh, they could use a quarterback rather than Kenny Pickett. Uh, so I think that that could be a move that we might see. They've definitely shown interest here ever since the Broncos said that they're, he's able to have talks with other teams. Uh, but, yeah, it's very interesting to see what's going on with the Broncos. I mean, we just released Justin Simmons, who's like an eight-time Pro Bowler. I know, crazy. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, well, I know he's getting up in age, and maybe that's why they, you know, I don't know. I ultimately don't know. But it's it seems like they're tanking when we're not even in season to tank. I mean, I don't understand what's going on. Maybe they have other things that they're doing. Maybe they're going to end up doing something special. Doubt it. Uh, Number one pick for trading for Justin Fields. Gosh. Yeah. But there's a lot of money that we have now lost and put away. And I don't know who we're going to have to fill in that spot. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, kind of kind of scary to, to go into the next season, you know, with, with all these question marks. But, hey, who knows? Maybe the team will bond together more and play harder than they ever have. I don't know. So there's a little bit of some news for you in the NFL. I don't know if you have anything oh, in the NFL or anything. Yeah, but... in the NFL combine, shout out, unfortunately, to the Texas wide receiver, Xavier Worthy, with a new 40-yard record, 4-2-1. Pretty dang fast. I mean, I think Bryce Willison is faster, but, you know, that's just me. I mean, he runs a 4-1. He runs a 4-1 now. You put a little something on the end zone from that, the end of the 40-yard line, you best believe he's getting there at a 4 wood. You best believe. <laughs> Shout out to Bruce. I know he ain't listening, but, you know, I'm going to send him this clip. Uh, but Bruce, 4 one he's faster than Xavier Worthy. I'm challenging. I'm calling out Xavier Worthy. One-on-one -on -one with Bruce, Bryce Willison, Bruce the Deuce, Bruce of the Dunes. He wants the one v one. You Xavier Worthy. What are you gonna do? You're gonna fold. You're gonna cry. He runs a four one. He wants to challenge you. That's all I'm gonna say. But 
That's all the news that I have. Hey, hang on. Speaking of 40 yard dashes, uh the other day I saw a video. I, I don't know if I've ever even seen this before. I might not have. I might have and just forgot. Bo Jackson was talking about back whenever he ran some 40s. Uh, he had like, I don't know if it was a pro day or if some people just asked him to run a 40. And this was like before some of the like really new technolo like technology and stuff and all the the stuff they've got nowadays to get the exact time or whatnot. But he ran a 40. uh for some people and they were using just, you know, the stopper like that. They, they did have some type of technology to be able to read it. I don't know exactly what it was, but basically what he said is that the guys who clocked it got him at like a four, one, six or something like that. And the other technology thing, the one that wasn't the person clicking it, got him at like a four, one, nine, like, Crazy. So somewhere in the four ones, he possibly yeah. could have ran. Bryce also wants to challenge Bo Jackson uh, on a one v one. You know he's gonna make his come up at the fastest by challenging retired old NFL legends who have. He's pulling the Jake time. Paul. He's pulling yeah. the Jake Paul. <laughs> hey, you guys haven't seen it. You guys probably haven't. But shout out also to Bryce Willison for dunking four years ago, shattered the backboard. He was he went crazy 360 dunk it was wild wild scenes uh, so more breaking news on that his vertical is insane it is 40 inches so you know if you guys are ever interested and you want to come to Louisiana and you want a one v one Bryce and a 40 yard dash or vertical jump competition or one v one in basketball he's always up for the challenge he's never lost anything in his life uh, so you know. Don't be scared. Challenge him. He loves he loves the competition. So, anyways, well, that's all I have. Do you have anything else? I'm good. I got it. All right. Well, that's us. Terrible takes. We're back. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Just a reminder: we are sponsored by Re Revival Pizza Company, located in Sterlington, Louisiana, off 165. Uh, so yeah, that's all we have for you guys. Thank you guys for listening. We love you guys so much for your support. See you guys in the next episode. Peace. Peace.